Hi, I'm Josh Bruner. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Baseball, I sit down with head coach Tony Robichaux to preview the week ahead for the Ragin' Cajuns baseball. Later on, we get to know senior outfielder Oren Vayon and follow the Ragin' Cajuns as it says thank you and plays a little golf. But first, Coach Robichaux joins me to discuss the weekend series versus Georgia State. You're watching Inside Louisiana Baseball. We're now joined live with head coach Tony Robichaux. Coach, congratulations on the weekend sweep. You carried some momentum from last weekend's um, series at Coastal Carolina where you took two of three games into this weekend where, you, again, you took three games from Georgia State. What were some of the keys to the success for the team this weekend? Well, I think the big thing is our hitters now are hitting one through nine. Uh, everybody's playing their part, and even if a guy is struggling, he's still being productive of being able to get a butt down or a squeeze down. And so I think that's been good, and I think we've, we've solidified with Jack coming out on Friday now for us and Brandon. It's, 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 it's able to give the hitters a chance to settle in the middle games, and I was really proud of the players, mainly because we had a whole week. I think we had a week to practice. We had a week to practice before the other one. And we get rid of some of those midweek games. Um, I think this team's better when they practice before they play. And I think both weeks we had a chance to practice. And then I was real proud that they hung in this week because they had finals, <clears throat> all the weather, and everything else. Uh, and and they really were able to stay focused. And I think that's when able to what's been a big thing for them too, is to be able to stay focused. How big of a challenge is it for weather when you have that kind of stuff rolling in? How hard is it to keep the team, especially when you're having to move a game back two hours? What, what is that mentality in the locker room? Like, how are you keeping those guys, you know, on their A game? Well, it's, it can be dangerous, you know. If you look at weather delays, rain delays, anything, you know, some teams will get in there and put flip-flops on and start playing cards. And then after a while, you know, can they flip the switch to get back to where you need them to be? And so I thought they did a good job. I, we were able to let them leave to go get something to eat and come back. And I think that helped them. They didn't have to stay in the clubhouse for a long, long period of time. I think when they have to stay cooped up in that clubhouse for too long of a time, I think they can get funny. And then all of a sudden, are they mature enough to cut the faucet off and stop cutting up and come back outside and, and being able to get focused. And uh, this team was able to do that. And I think that's what led to our success over the weekend. And it was a busy weekend too. And with the weather, senior day got pushed back to Sunday. And obviously senior day is an, a very emotional day for a lot of reasons. And then when you add Mother's Day on top of that, there's, there's a lot of things going on on Sunday. What are some of those challenges that you, you face with, with that emotion before a game and then having to, again, get everybody focused? Well, some of it's good emotion. You know, you preach to them to play like it's your last game. So you got that piece working for you. On the other hand, does he try too much? Does he try doing too much because it's his last game? So you got to monitor that. And then we were able to break it up into three days. We were able to, you know, do the graduation on Friday and then come back and do the seniors. But we did what has got pushed back, like you alluded to. So I think what's helped us is being able to divvy them up into three days. Even though one got pushed back, you're not doing all of that all on, on that Sunday, that last game. Used to, we'd do everything on the last game of the season and I think that's just too much and I think the way we've busted it out now makes it cleaner and quicker you can get out and do it and get back to work obviously it was a really productive senior day as well and all seven of the seniors you know had a great day at least all the offensive players you know had a hit both pitchers were able to come out and obviously what Gunner did with the last strike to end his raging Cajun career kind of talk about that group as a whole you know for starting on, on Sunday, but then just their entire careers. Well, you know, every senior day is unique because some have uh, been injured, some uh, aren't playing as much as they thought they'd be playing, so it's always tough. Sometimes you, you never know if the parent's gonna shake your hand or punch you at home plate. So I've been in a lot of unique situations in my 31 years, and this, this senior day was really nice because all of the guys were playing, and none of them played because it was senior day. That's what was really nice. I mean, Grant Cox was, we, we can't find a Sunday starter. And so he's been the most reliable guy coming out of the pen. He had good rhythm and timing over the last two to three weeks. So he earned that because we thought he was the best man for the job. And then everybody else was in there basically because they have earned the right to be in there. And then, but it's set up so nice, like you said, where all of them produced, all of them were able to get a hit. And then in the end of it, you were able to sync it up which is hard to do, 
um, to get Gunner out on the mound and be able to get that last guy with a strikeout and finish with his roommate, Handsome Monica, behind the plate. I know you're, you're a team first guy, you're not an individual guy, but obviously Gunner has meant so much to this community, to this program. Can you kind of talk about what it was like to see him strike out the last batter to end his home career as a Raging Cajun? Well, you know, the, in, in sports, you know, in any of our sports here or at any other university, you'll get these people that just do uh, great things along the way. And so they, 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 they brand it into the fans emotionally because you can kind of remember where you were when we got the last out to go to Omaha. And you can remember uh, things along the way when, when big events occurred. And, and, and those guys are ever branded uh, in the history of, of, of that program. And he's, he's been so good on Friday night for us as an All-American starting pitcher. And he's done so much that he, he's kind of been branded into the fold. And so because of that, and then running into the injury he had last year and had to be redshirted, go through all that rehab, then come back and then still get another setback to not be able to be where he truly wants to be. Um, and, and, and really he can give you one inning but yet now he's still going out there and, and giving you something. I mean, that was a critical inning. It was a critical eighth. We, we were managing the eighth inning like the ninth because we felt um, we were going to get to 215. And so because of that, we brought him out with two outs left with the tying run at second base. We couldn't afford that guy to score because we didn't know if the game would end up as a tie uh, with, the, with the clock. So we brought him out so he had to come back out and finish the next inning, but the hitters kind of pulled away a little bit and gave him some wiggle room. But, no, it was phenomenal to see him do that because it was fitting. I think the game pays you back. I've always believed that. I think the game knows who to pay back, just like in life. I think life knows who to pay back. And, uh, and that guy's worked so hard, but people have never seen is his work ethic, man. Um, his work ethic to prepare, to get himself ready to play is phenomenal. And uh, to be able to sit right there and close out the last game at the Teague for this year and then end it in a strikeout, I think nothing really happened except the game paid him back. I have to ask, ninth inning is coming up. There's a drop dead time set. Yes. Uh, there was a whole lot of confusion from everyone in the ballpark and the press box, even even with you and you, you know, came out and tried to get an explanation. Can you kind of explain what happened there? And you know, just obviously it set up a great ending for what I guess probably what everyone wanted to see, but kind of explain what happened in that situation. Yeah, you know, what's unique about it is, you know, we have a tie from Coastal Carolina last year because um, the, the drop dead time was enforced. And so all the teams have to turn in drop dead times at the beginning of the year to the Sun Belt Conference and it's typed up and then it's given to the umpires and it's given to every coach. So this was established already and it was established at home plate, which you do on Sundays, you establish the drop dead time. So if I'm, if I'm somewhere, that's the team that sets the drop dead time. And so because their flight was at 11, the drop dead time, which really means no new inning can start after 2.15. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they back out the time they think they need to shower, eat, and bus to New Orleans because they were flying out of New Orleans. So when it hits that time, that's it. You can finish the inning, but you cannot start a new inning. And why he didn't enforce it, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't trying to win um, playing chicken baseball. I mean, I'll play you in the parking lot, man. I mean, I ain't scared of nobody. But my, my whole thing is, is why are you going to set a rule and then not enforce it? Just do away with the rule. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. It was set at home plate. It was set before the conference season ever started, right? And then I think we have to take a look at that. I think somebody else has to have access to some type of time because it's in his pocket. And he gets to say, well, it was at 14 minutes and 28 seconds when yet the broadcast people up there are broadcasting the game. I yeah. mean, everybody's got to watch in the stadium. I mean, it, that's not what it is. Why that happened, I don't know. I think maybe because it happened so close that he felt let's just give him there at bat. I don't know. I can't speak for him. But it is what it is. He said let's go. So, you know, you got to go. And 
it, 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 it set up to where Gunner ended his career in something positive. And, and so, you know, we, we, we turned a negative into a positive and Gunner ends up, uh, I think, getting paid back for all the hard work he put in over five years. And obviously that worked out. Coming up next, we'll sit down with Oren Van to get to know more about the Lafayette outfielder. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it's Monge, if you're happy and you know it's Monge, if you're happy and you know it, nothing ever will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Monge, Zydeco, Monge, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our Raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. Welcome back. Now it's time to meet senior outfielder from Lafayette, Oren Vayon. My name is Oren Vayon, and I'm a senior on the Louisiana baseball team. The 0-2 to Vayon. Line to left field and deep. It is. No it's out of here, Dan. It's out of here. That's Goal. the way to end it. Put another <laughs> dive in the jukebox box for Oren Vayon. I was kind of struggling for a while and uh, I was in the outfield and I knew I was due up uh, to the plate so I was kind of just talking to myself saying you know it's about time to do something you know maybe just hit the ball do something crazy and uh, I got to the plate and he gave me I was 0-2 fouled off two fastballs and I kind of was just sitting on the next one and I hit it and I was rounding first and I just saw it go out and everyone I just remember everyone rushing out the dugout I can't even explain it. I kind of just went numb, if you would say, because I just really couldn't believe it. When I came here my freshman year, I was definitely like humbled because I realized I really wasn't that good. I um, thought I was better than what I was. And then uh, having to have Tommy John surgery, um, not being able to play baseball for a whole year, kind of flipped my world upside down, if you'd say, because you know, doing something you love every day and not being able to do it um, for a long time sucked. Um, and then transferring to LSUE to uh, stay there for one year and then get offered by New Orleans and stay there for two years. Graduated in general studies and then uh, that summer I contacted Coach Robe to see if I could come over education again because it's always what I wanted to be. Coach Robe helps me uh, in many ways more than just being a baseball player. You know, he's always preparing us for life after baseball and becoming men, you know, because he's always saying that uh, God's going to ask you what kind of man you were, what kind of friend you were, what kind of person you were, not how much money you had, what kind of car you drove, you know, so he's just preparing us for the real world and, you know, just how to be better men. My experience this season, uh, it's been different than all the other uh, years for sure. I mean, being uh, that it's my last go might have a little bit to do with that, but uh, the people, my teammates, uh, they're awesome. Being back in, uh, you know, in Lafayette, 
playing for the community, my friends and family is just, it's awesome. I've always wanted to be on the field as a Raging Cajun from my freshman year, so it hits really close for me to be able to prove that I can play here and you know do it for everyone, so it's just nice. My kids were a big factor um, in my decision to come back here. I love my kids. I mean, my oldest is three. She's hilarious. Uh, my youngest is 10 months, who just took like her first steps last night, actually. So, I mean, they're both growing up so fast. Uh, I mean, I love my kids. That's really all I can say. Uh, I'd do anything for them. And it's just, uh, I'm glad to be back home so I get to spend time with them and see them all the time now. It definitely gives me strength knowing they're there for sure. It makes me want to play harder and, you know, do everything I can. Being a student athlete slash dad is definitely a challenge. Uh, just, like I said, being at the field and then having to go home and, um, try to relieve some stress from uh, my fiance and she's been dealing with a baby all day and then I've been at the field and then I have homework or study or it's definitely a, a lot to juggle but uh, it's all worth it you know it'll all be worth it in the end just gotta keep you know grinding that's all it is. Coming up next the Raging Cajuns thank its supporters in a very special and unique way. Look at me in the eye they bleed just like you bleed There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco If you're happy and you know it Then your feet will surely show it If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco If you're happy and you know it's If you're happy and you know it Nothing God will help you show it If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco Zydeco, To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Welcome back. It's now time to follow the Raging Cajuns as they thank their supporters and then play a little golf. Hello, my name is Robert Hunt. I'm here today to call everybody in the Cajun Nation to let them know that we thank them so much for everything that they have done for us. Student athletes from across all of our sports are coming together to thank all of the investors that have made contributions to the Raging Cajuns Athletic Foundation. It's important that everyone hears from us because without them, Raging Cajun Athletics wouldn't exist. So, all of these student athletes are either making personal phone calls to certain individuals or they are handwriting thank you notes to everyone. It's really important because they are the reason that I get to do what I love to do and everyone else here gets to do what they love to do and they are the reason that we get the, these beautiful facilities and the best uh, trainers and coaches and they're the reason why we are able to just do any of this and it's important to thank them be personally because they're helping us out. I think it's very important to call and write letters to our donors so that we can show our appreciation for all that they do for us. Without their help, we couldn't be as successful as we are, and we thank them so much from the bottom of our hearts. It's nice, you know, you get to meet some people on the phone, you know, some people actually sit, like, for, for example, I'm calling, so I'm going on the list, I'm calling people, you know, telling them thank you for what they do, and you know, 
get to meet people over the phone, you know, have a, have a nice little conversation with them and stuff like that. So it's pretty enjoyable. It's, it's a lot of help for us because, I mean, they give so much to our athletic foundation and everything else to put us in all these flights and hotels and food that we eat every day. And, uh, I mean, it's good to tell them that, you know, it helps and that it uh, means a lot to us. We're here with, on a beautiful day, uh, you can see the birds are chirping and the nice little spring breeze here out, out at Oakbourne Country Club with our uh, annual Hot and Spicy uh, Athletics fundraiser. It, uh, it's a gorgeous day to play golf. We have a, a full afternoon crew uh, of supporters coming to play a scramble. Uh, more importantly, to, to support our, our athletic department as a whole. This is not just a, a golf fundraiser. This, uh, this fundraiser is uh, enhances our recruiting budgets uh, for, our, for our coaches in, in sports. So uh, it is, it's a very important day. Uh, it's a day for coaches and, and supporters to get together and, and, and play a little round of golf and, and ultimately, um, ultimately have some good fellowship uh, with our supporters. The money raised from this helps with our recruiting budgets along with scholarships and our new nutrition station for our student athletes. So we're very appreciative of all of our sponsors, Tabasco coming on board again this year, Fluid Crane along with Coke, Gulf Coast Bank, uh, Wells Fargo, I can't forget Chahan Realty Group and Titan Bonin. Um, just so supportive of everything we do and especially today as we are out here at Oakbourne just ready to play on a beautiful day. We always have good things for the players. Um, first, I think they all look forward to um, our sandwiches. So we have our cooking truck out here and we do what we call an egg sandwich, a Tabasco sandwich, and it is fabulous. So I think a lot of people come out here, they always want to know, are the sandwiches available? And then we always have a fun ditty bag. They have different things, always a UL hat, always some kind of golf shirt or wind vest or something um, fun to take home and remember um, how much fun they had in the, at the tournament and come back next year. I'm, I'm actually very lucky playing with uh, David Gleason and Todd, Todd and Chad Trahan. We're going to just have we're going to probably have a cigar and, and have have a lot of fun. Uh, this old this old relaxed muscle in the front here produces a bad back, so uh, competitive golf is is well in the rearview mirror. Next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we look at the week ahead with head coach Tony Robichaux. The residence halls are very new, very clean, very nice. A lot of people get suite style rooms, which are two person to one room. And some nice perks to the residence halls are free laundry. And they even have an app, so it'll tell you when your laundry is ready. So that's sweet. They have weekly housekeeping, so you don't have to worry about your bathroom. There's such a variety of food options on and off campus. You can get anything from Chick-fil-A and Pizza Hut to crawfish etouffee and jambalaya. The meal plan is actually included in your room, so you're never going hungry when you live on campus. When there's something going on on campus, you never have to worry about how you're going to get there because you're literally steps away. You can just walk. If I pull a late night studying or writing a paper, I can take those few extra minutes to sleep in because my class is 10 minutes away. Well, we have an amazing opportunity for our first year students where they can live in the residence halls and be a part of a living learning community. So these are small communities where students can make friends very quickly with other students that they have a lot in common with. For example, students who like the arts, they can live in Gateway to the Arts and then they take classes together. Building relationships has been just as easy as inviting people to go out to eat in the dining hall or inviting someone to study together in the library or the community room. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Again, joined with head coach Tony Robichaux. Coach, next up, heading to ULM, going to Monroe for the uh, weekend series finale um, of the season. What do you need to do to be successful against the in-state rival? Well, we got to stay doing what we've been doing, you know, try to get good pitching, play good defense, and timely hitting. And we, that's something you never really stray from. And we've been able the last two weekends 
put some consistency together. You know, one of the big things that's hurt us all year due to injuries and moving parts all over the place and pitching young arms is that you, we, the only thing we've been consistent at is being inconsistent. And so we kind of vacillate, you know, we will do this and then not do that and do this, but then not do that. And this weekend we, we, we were able to hold everything down better. We pitched against the three run inning all weekend except one, but when we gave up that inning, uh, we were up 16 to one at the time. So we still didn't need to give up that, mm -hmm. that, that three run inning, which ends up being a five spot. But at the end of the day, we were able to stay away from the three run inning after game one and two, game one, nine innings was a shutout. And we won different ways, which was really good this weekend. We were able to beat one of the better arms in the conference. Guy's going to be a draft choice, you know, way above the 10th round. And we, the only way to beat him is we were going to have to throw a shutout probably. Well, we did. Mm -hmm. And then the hitters did what they needed to do, two stolen bases, a sack fly. And then I think they were trying to uh, defend the squeeze and ended up throwing a wild pitch. And those two runs became the difference maker. And then the next day, we scored 16 and then yet come back again on Sunday with an early turnaround time and still play consistent. So that's what we have to do this week, have three good, two good practices on Tuesday and Wednesday because they're moved up and then get in there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and play good baseball. You've won five out of the last six conference games that you've played in, and you preach a lot about momentum. How important is it going to be to take the momentum that you built over that stretch into this last series before the conference tournament? Well, I think we just have to stay on the process. You know, winning is a byproduct of staying on a process and getting off results. You know, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm not a big result guy because I don't think you can, I don't think you can alter a result. I think you can alter a process. But um, so what I think they've learned how to do is stay to the process, stay on the hitting system, stay on the pitching system, and then let winning be a byproduct of staying on the process. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we'll look ahead to the upcoming schedule. Being a Raging Cajun means wearing red on Fridays, supporting our sports teams by going to the basketball games, the football games. Being a Raging Cajun means saying hi to your friends when you see them around campus or saying hi to people that you've never seen before on campus because that's who we are. The atmosphere here is electric. I mean, we have the best fans here, and the energy around campus is just the same. You know, those are the same people that come to your games and support you. The student section is packed almost every game, and to have that so much support, it just feels good that, you know, people actually care. You're not just going out there and playing basketball and just you and your teammates. You actually have people that are behind you and want to see you do well. And we have many activities and events for students that are freshmen that help get them to build their Rage and Cajun spirit. Then they start going to the activities that all the other students are, are participating in, like homecoming and lawn yop day and you know different things within their major. And all of these things really get students to start feeling what it's like to be a Rage and Cajun. Not just with athletics, but also with just the feel of what it's like in being the Rage and Cajun family. So whether you're interested in athletics or academics or art or Orchestra, as long as you're doing what you love in this university, you're making this university proud and you have Raging Cajun spirit. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. Thank you so much for watching. It's now time to take a look at the upcoming schedule.